A man living without his body, a monkey on a mission for vengeance, a hero who became the very villain who kind of made him. All that and more await you on this list. Welcome back Nerd Squad, it's me Amanda and this is the top 10 superhero origin stories we can't believe. Part 3. Part 3, I can't believe we're on part 3. When it comes to hero origins, do you prefer ones that blow your mind or those that are more grounded in the everyday? Number 10, Hitmonkey. Hitmonkey, huh, oh man, I love Hitmonkey. Initially, Hitmonkey was just a monkey living up in the mountains until a human assassin wandered wounded into his clan. They took in the human and nursed him back to health. The monkey who had become Hitmonkey was nervous about the man's presence and at one point rebelled against his clan for their decision to continue to offer refuge to the assassin. Monkey violently struck out and was banished as a result. However, during his time away, he spotted other other armed men in the wilderness and rushed back to warn his clan. But unfortunately, he got there too late. They had all been killed in the attack, with the assassin also dying. Swearing to get revenge, Hitmonkey was born that day, as he wielded the assassin's guns and would continue to be guided by the spirit of the dead assassin, who helped him on his quest and also sought to resolve his own unfinished business through Hitmonkey. <laughs> and friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love weird weird, wacky list like this, click that subscribe button. We do a lot of cool stuff like this and you're not gonna wanna miss it when it does pop up. Number nine, Green Lantern. In part two, we talked about the original origin of Alan Scott's Green Lantern, but now we're gonna talk about the amazing and also unbelievable origin of one of the newer Green Lanterns, Sojourner Moline. Jo has a fascinating origin in the sense that she was chosen to become Green Lantern for a sector of space known only as the Far Sector. That's how far out it is. It does not have a designated number. It's just Far Sector. Also interesting and unique is that Joe's Green Lantern ring that she was given is a special kind that is basically self-charging. Doesn't need a battery. Making it perfect for cases out in remote areas of space. However, while this is a great strength and some would consider this ring to be like one of the strongest, it can also be somewhat of a weakness because it actually takes time to recharge by itself. Meaning that Joe has to be a little bit more conservative and creative at times when using her powers in battle, being careful not to fully tap herself out unless, you know, she absolutely has to, but she has to make those choices. That's what makes it so exciting. Number 8, Elasti Woman. Whether we're talking comics or the live action Doom Patrol series, Elasti Woman has a pretty interesting origin. She was initially a Hollywood actress, Rita Farr. In the Doom Patrol series, it's implied that she was cursed for being rude to locals while on set, falling into a body of water where she was exposed to a toxic gas that left her with the uncontrollable ability to shapeshift. Ultimately, this kind of ruined her career. In the comics, it was exposure to toxic gas from a volcano while on a shoot in Africa that gave her this ability. Also, of course, ruining her career. She would end up joining Niles Calder's team of misfits known as the Doom Patrol. In the live action series, Rita constantly struggles to control her abilities. In the comics, she also becomes the adopted mother of Garfield Logan's Beast Boy, who we often nickname Gar, after marrying Steve Dayton's Mento, another member of the Doom Patrol team. Number seven, Rogue. Well, when it comes to Rogue, she's a pretty tragic and honestly pretty wild backstory. Initially, we knew her as a villain in the comics, but this wouldn't last too long. With Rogue eventually leaving her adoptive mother's sides and joining the X-Men. From the beginning of her origins, Rogue's backstory has been pretty wild. She was initially born into a hippie commune out in the wilderness. Her mother ended up disappearing in a mystical ritual when she was young, which left Anna Marie to be raised by her stern Aunt Carrie her mother, Priscilla's sister, and her often absent father, Owen. Eventually, Anna Marie would run away from home, gaining the nickname of Rogue because, you know, she kept to herself, which would eventually also become her codename as a super. She would end up being taken in by Mystique and her wife, Destiny, with the two villainesses becoming, you guessed it, Rogue's adoptive mothers. Initially, Rogue's powers manifested during her first kiss with her childhood crush, Cody Robbins. As a result, Cody's life energy was drained from the physical contact and he was left comatose. Thanks to this very traumatizing experience, for years, Rogue struggled to control her powers, often choosing to wear clothes that fully covered her body for fear of accidentally hurting those closest to her. It wasn't until recently in the comics that she managed to gain better control over her mutant abilities when she finally confronted her fears, realizing that it was actually her own fear that had been preventing her from controlling her powers the whole time. 
Number 6. Oracle When you think about it, Oracle's origins are pretty insane. I still can't believe this happened, considering the story that her origin comes from is not even fully canon. Oracle is Barbara Gordon, and we aren't talking about Barbara Gordon's initially confusing connection to Commissioner Jim Gordon and her origin as Batgirl here, but instead her transformation from Batgirl to Oracle with her Oracle origin. This all went down in Killing Joke, initially intended to be a one-off story that was not part of the main continuity canon. And for the most part, it really isn't. However, in the story, Barbara Gordon is visiting with her father, Jim Gordon. Dressed as a civilian, she answers the door and is shot through the spine by the Joker. And for some reason, this is the part of the story that was kept and incorporated into canon. The silver lining is, it gave us Oracle, I suppose, which is a super cool character. But the unfortunate thing is it created a lot of trauma and extra struggle for Babs, with her also having to retire as Batgirl for quite some time. Number 5. Red Hood We're not talking about Jason Todd's origins as Robin here, instead we're talking about his origin as Red Hood. And I know that some may consider Red Hood to be more a villain at times or anti-hero, but one, anti-heroes are still also heroes, and two, I would consider Todd's Red Hood more of a straight up hero right now than well, anything else. I mean, he did switch from guns to a crowbar, it's still pretty brutal, but hey, progress! Jason Todd became the Red Hood after he was believed to have been killed by the Joker. First of all, this death was actually voted on by fans, which is a pretty wild marketing strategy and pretty crazy that that's part of this origin. And after he died, his death was considered to be one of the actual mainstay deaths in comics, with the three permanent deaths in comics at one point being considered to be Uncle Ben, Bucky Barnes, and of course Jason Todd. Evidently not so permanent as two out of three of those characters have now at this point in time ended up returning, albeit you know after a long period I will say of staying dead, unlike most other fallen heroes and characters. Jason returned however as the villain Red Hood. In the story it was explained that he was revived via time spent in basically the Lazarus pits, being taken in and trained by Talia al Ghul and the League of Assassins. That's kind of like how he recovered and how he became Red Hood a little bit. However, do you even know how any of that was made possible? Hmm? What well, was actually a change made to the universe that was one of many explained by Superboy Prime punching reality. Yeah, even more bizarre, the punch actually happened in terms of the comics continuity in terms of their release dates after Todd returned. But that's explained by the fact that Superboy Prime's punch actually affected all of reality throughout time. So while it did happen afterward in terms of when the comics were released, it affected the past, which means Jason Todd actually came back to life six months after his death in the adjusted canon. Which would actually even be like way back when. So people were like, but didn't this happen after? And it's like, yes, but like this actually doesn't even, it affects way in the past, really. Oh, Superboy Prime, punch in reality. Number 4. Ben Riley. Ben Riley is a superhero who we would often come to know mainly as Scarlet Spider. But before that, we actually just knew him for a while as. Spider-Man. He is the clone of Peter Parker who was created by the Jackal, although there was a period of time where Peter and Ben were not sure which one of them was the clone. And it was even believed that Ben may actually be the original, with Peter being the clone. Beyond that, Ben Riley, while being created by Miles Warren's Jackal and tormented by the villain, would also at one point go on to adopt the name for himself, becoming the Jackal. Which is pretty messed up when you think about everything that's happened to Ben Riley. Number 3. Robot Man Cliff Steele is DC's Robot Man. For those unfamiliar, he is one of the mainstays on DC's oddball superhero team, the Doom Patrol. Whether we're talking about the live action adaptation or the comic book origin for this character, both are honestly pretty similar and pretty weird. Basically, Cliff Steele was a NASCAR driver, additionally in the comics an obsessive thrill seeker, not exclusively a race car driver alone, and during a car accident his body ends up being destroyed. With his brain still surviving, however, his life was saved by Niles Calder, who gave him a cybernetic body, which is how he became Robot Man. Unfortunately, a much more rudimentary robot body though than other superheroic cyborgs like, well, Cyborg. <laughs> in the live action series Doom Patrol, Cliff's origin is made even more unbelievable, and we learn that this version of the accident happened not on the track, but after the race while on the way home. Cliff had been having an affair and his wife found out, but at the same time he also found out that his wife had found out and then so she had had an affair and she let him know kind of in the worst 
time possible. She revealed this to him during his race, causing him to almost get in a life threatening car crash. The two, however, after the race decided to renew their commitment to one another and ultimately try to salvage their marriage. I guess you know, a near death experience can do that to you. While on their way home with their young daughter Clara in the back seat, Cliff ended up getting into an accident tragically with a large logging truck. The accident cost his wife her life, Cliff his body, and left his daughter alive but severely traumatized. Even more wild, in the show, we'd actually later learn that Cliff getting into this accident was kind of all part of Niall Calder's experiments as he sought to find a way to become immortal. Now that is unbelievable. Number 2 Longshot Longshot is the son of Shatterstar and he's from Mojo World. So he's pretty much as weird as it gets just with that. Longshot was basically created as a clone of Shatterstar who ended up being sent back in time to the Mojoverse by Mephisto. But it also gets even weirder for this character when you factor in his jumps back and forth from the Mojoverse to Earth and back again. And it gets even weirder when you factor in Shatterstar's origins. Number 1 Shatterstar As I said, to really appreciate the mind blowing nature of Longshot's origins, you need to know Shatterstar. So, Shatterstar is actually the biological son of Longshot and another mutant with a weird origin story, Dazzler, who we talked about on part 2 of this series. Which, of course, means that Shatterstar and Longshot are, in essence, one another's fathers, in a way, <laughs> with both their origins being tied up in what I would call a time paradox. I think that's what that is for sure. Longshot is Shatterstar's father, but after traveling back in time, Shatterstar's DNA would be taken and used to create Longshot. In essence, also making him Longshot's genetic father. So yeah, they're both each other's fathers, they both exist, and they're both really confusing. Well, that's about it. I'll see you next time, but until then, you stay nerdy, YouTube.